So I'm going to teach you about how we store energy in a spring. And that's the same as the amount of work you've done to stretch the spring. So I'll also say this is the work done to stretch a spring. It doesn't have to be a spring. It can be anything stretchy like an elastic band or a bowl of jello or a steel beam but not a cat, can't be a cat. You're gonna stretch something and you're gonna pull it and stretch that object. Now, if I stretch it out X centimeters, let's say 30 centimeters, how would you calculate the force that I'm pulling with right now? What's the formula? Good, F equals KX. Now what's that K mean? It's a spring constant, right? So is that K gonna be any different if I'm here or there or over here? The K is the same, right? And so that force grows linearly as I stretch the spring, okay? So if I start with no stretch, what's my force right here? Zero. Zero, I'm not stretching at it all, so it's zero. And, it, and as I start to stretch it, the force is really small because I stretch it a teeny little bit. So the force is teeny, teeny, tiny. And then as you stretch more, it gets a little higher and it gets a little higher and it gets a little higher and it gets a little higher. And out at the end at X, your force is KX. Okay. So the force for an elastic stretch is kx. Now the spring pulls against us, so sometimes we say negative, but let's just leave it at kx for now. So you might think, okay, work is force times distance, right? So you might say, well, it's kx times the distance. But that force is not the same the whole way. So as I stretch this out, if you did a graph and you had x on the x, and you had your force on the y. What would it look like? You guys actually made this graph. Right? What kind of graph is it? Riley's going like this. Is that right? Angela, you agree? Yeah. So it's going to start at 0, and it's going to go linearly up. You remember making this graph? You did your hook slow lab? Okay, now tell me on this graph, turn to the person beside you and decide what is the average amount of force that I have applied to stretch this spring. Okay. What's the average? Benji, what do you think? No idea, okay, good. I stumped him. Something to think about finally. Do you think that the average is kx? So out here, this force at the end is kx, right? Is the average kx? Is the average zero? No. Kiana? Somewhere in between. In fact, it is exactly in between. So what would we call that, Riley? In between 0 and kx. Say that again. Let's give a golf clap for a key. So it's 1 half of kx. If you wanted the average, you'd go right in the middle. Right between. Because half the time you're below and half the time you're above and it's moving linearly. There's no curve in here. So your average force is not kx. Your average force is one half kx. Does that make sense? Because you're increasing the force linearly, you start at zero and you end up at kx, your average is going to be half kx. Okay, so if we want to find the work, which is also our potential energy 
stored in the spring, we would say, we would say this is our average force. So we would say half kx, that's our average force. And we're gonna multiply that by the distance that it goes, and the, and the distance is x. So what's half kx times x? This is one half kx squared. So this is the work done to stretch the spring, and it's also the potential energy in the spring. That's kind of a little bit advanced thing. And you could figure this out on your own, but I figured I would give you a little trick. So there might be a question about that on your energy test, hint, nudge, nudge.